I'm Jill Richardnitz, and I'm playing Girl. I'm David Hunter, and I'm playing Guy. David, I'll start with you. You've been in the show since July last year. What's it like to, to take over full time and, and have that role as, as your own? Uh, it's it's wonderful. It's it's a role that I've wanted to play for a long time, which is why I was kind of happy to come and understand it really, just to get the chance to do it. Um, and you're kind of always hoping it might happen that you'll be the one who gets bumped up or whatever else, but you kind of in the back of your head thinking probably won't happen, you know what I mean? So, you know, I've worked hard and I've done my bit and, and it's great to get an opportunity and now I can kind of making my own for the first time, I suppose, more than anything, and, and be confident in, in just doing what I, I believe is right for it, and having nothing to compare against, do you know what I mean? So um, it's really exciting and really nice to have a brand new girl to, to do that with. And Jill, you've, you've come into the show and you've taken over from the Olivier Award winning yeah. uh, Zrinka. Does that add more pressure for you or is it business as usual and, and how you go about any show? I mean, of course, uh, because of questions like that being asked. Um, but I have to admit, it's it's a complete honor. Like, because I, I got cast, I was out in California doing um, some auditions for pilot season. And I got a phone call, it was like, can you come back and, and do once? And it was that weekend before I started rehearsals that uh, Zrinka won. And I was watching, watching the awards, like hoping once would just clean up and get them all. And I was so chuffed to see that. Just, you know, she's such an amazing actress and such a beautiful performer in this role. And it's just, um, it's really flattering to be able to, to step in to, um, to that position. Um, yeah. I was thinking about the show before I came to you guys today. And for me, there were three kind of... Um, main kind of motifs in, in the show. You've got the music, you know, this Oscar-winning kind of uh, score uh, that is not only kind of um, performed by really talented actors and, and singers, but musicians as well. And I think you touched on it. Did, did you both learn the instrument for this part, or, or were you? Um, um, I took piano lessons as a as a kid mm. for about three years, um, and then we just sort of stopped. And then it was once that reignited that for me. Um, and I started looking it again for, for this role. Wow. Um, and it's something that I can honestly say I want to do for the rest of my life. I, I so love the music in this and I so love the piano. Mm. And um, when I can afford it, I'm going to get a big one. <laughs> <laughs> and um, yeah, so that, that was my story. I think you're slightly different. Now. Yeah, I've, been, I, I've played guitar for a long time from about the age of 16 or something, but um, it kind of, you know, came and went as different jobs came and went, and I did have to pick it up again mm. and hit it a bit harder for, for once, for once. And, um, <laughs> and um, yeah, I remember sitting in my, when I knew I had the part, sitting in my kitchen and when Charles and my old place and like learning a riff for a day and then learning how to sing to that riff for a day and then learning how to kind of do it without looking at my hand. So I was, it wasn't something that I just kind of, you know, For me, the other thing, another thing that's, that's obviously very prevalent is, is the love and the love loss and the, the yearning for someone to be close to. How difficult is that to replicate eight times a week for however many months to fall in love over and over and over and over? It's um, it I, it takes it out of you, I think. It's like you know, it sounds really so hard one, and all that stuff, <laughs> but um, yeah, it's it it's. Yeah, it's exhausting. I think you've, after this show, you feel like you've been through something because you have to access those things. It has to be in an honest way, and that you can't kind of fake it. And it has you know? to be truthful. Yeah. Each, each night, otherwise there's not much else there. Like it has to be that. It's connection. so intimate, and the set is so you know simple, and there's, it, no nothing's doing the work for you. We literally play the songs and sing them and act our way through it, and so. I don't know, I mean, I don't know what your process is before, but I have to kind of wind myself up for it for the show. And there's no kind of like, right, just chill. And I try to be able to extend, but before I go on, I need to just kind of beat myself up a little bit to be kind of that depressed, walking straight onto the set and being like that down and, and, and battered. And that's not a nice thing, do you know what I mean? But you've really, I think I've got to put myself through it every night or it's just not going to work. Um, it's so exhausting, yeah. especially this week on our first performances. When all the adrenaline's going a bit crazy as well, I was like, felt like I've been hit by a bus on Tuesday, Tuesday morning. morning. We both like looked hungover. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, I like, I, I woke up about I don't know ten or something. I looked in the mirror. I had like two bags in my eyes. It's <laughs> like, you know, I'm not older than that. I mean, I was like, I put on face cream and got back in bed. <laughs> I was in denial, but um, it does. It takes a takes a toll. And, and, and then for me, the, the final piece of the trio is, is that this Irish culture is very prevalent and, and very uh, kind of poignant in the show. Mm. 
how did you guys go about kind of immersing yourself in that culture? Did you take a trip out to Dublin or was it just down the local Irish bar? Because for me, even this, you know, the, the staging instantly kind of transports me to somewhere in Temple Bar. So, mm -hmm. I mean, that helps, but the actual kind of camaraderie and uh, the, the kind of uh, that culture of, 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 that is, is, is so Irish, mm -hmm. uh, you don't get any other cultures like that. How did you guys kind of develop that? I think, I think the most helpful person to me was, was Des Kennedy, who's our resident director. Um, and there was things that he kind of told me about the way Irish men, for example, uh, relate to their fathers and the rest of their family, and that it isn't an emotional thing all the time. And this kind of quite deep-seated sort of manliness, I suppose, which uh, perhaps I don't really have innately. But for me, it was more about the Czech culture, actually. And um, yeah, when I got the role, um, I actually flew to Prague and a few days off, and I went to Czech Republic. and. Just tried to like dig in as much as I could. Um, I also have some family heritage from from there, like the Winternet side of my family is from Sudetenland, which is in the west of Czech Republic, um, and kind of between um, Budweiss, which is like Budweiser and Pilsen mm. Pilsner. So, um, <laughs> and so yeah, so I was in Prague, um, just kind of going around, seeing what I could find, and seeing what related to what I believe to be my character's backstory and everything, and that that was hugely useful. Um, I'd like to go back and do more. <laughs> and, and finally, what would you say to what's on stage readers um, to, to, that I've either been before uh, and not, but not seen you guys, or, or that are uh, once virgins, uh, to, to encourage them to, to come and see the show? Any wise words? Oh, um, I mean, I would, I would just say, just dive in. Like, you know, you may not know what to expect, but this show is very sneaky and you will be. <laughs> You'll be welcomed in, you'll be in this uh, this whole new world that's very different than any theatre you can see in town, I must say, and um, it's going to sneak up on you, and uh, it's going to grab you, because that's what, that's what happened to me. <laughs> so, yeah, good chance.